Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box? Our board game bag check of the B-movie expansion for the board game Roll Camera, a cooperative dice game from Keen Bean Studios, and uh, working with Grand Gamers Guild. And I've got to thank Mark from Grand Gamers Guild for getting a copy of this all the way up to me from Gen Con. And I've got to thank fan of the show Kevin for muling this all the way up from Gen Con because we couldn't make it this year. So thanks, Mark and Kevin. Uh, this is an expansion for a very cool board game um, that we really enjoyed that is all about making movies. But I'm not here to teach you the game. I'm just here to show you what's in the box. So we're going to crack the shrink on this and see... What the B movie expansion adds to roll camera from Keen Bean and Grand Gamers Guild. Oh, the reflection, the shrink, it's terrible. Let's fix that. All right, there we go. Better, better, better. All right. Oh, missed a bit. Here's a quick look at the box. I am going to assume, though I haven't confirmed it, that most people aren't going to keep this box. You're going to put everything in with the core game. No, this does require roll camera to play. This kind of explains what you're getting. It's a whole bunch of new things that you can use with the game, including new roles, new genre tokens, new action titles, 75 new scene cards, and just more cards, like tons. Every card's got unique artwork from the Keen Bean Studio. Oh, I dig that. That's a nice touch right there. That's, that's, all right, bonus points just for that. Oh, it's, it's, it's linen finished too. It's got a texture. I like that here. If you don't like reading, how to play a video right on top. We're going to toss this off to the side to take a look at this. And we're going to flip through. Yeah, okay, you do read it normal. I thought maybe I was going to have to flip it this way. Uh, rule book looks a lot like the original. Um, it's type of typographical font because it's supposed to look like a script. Lists all the components you're getting. Okay, this is a small box, right? This isn't very big. Look at all that stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Um, new rules and stuff. The new objective. How to set up with the changes. It's a thick rule book. Here's your different genres now. So your movies have genres. We have horror, horror, horrify. I almost said horrify. Is that like sci-fi horror? I guess Alien is a horrify movie. Um, you got horror, crime, sci-fi, fantasy, and western. Um, these tokens, honestly, like yes, they're they're to um put on your cards. But the thing that amazes me with this is they're also you can put them in the pictures, uh, which maybe I'll be able to show off. And now what you're gonna have is before your script was made up of two parts. Well, now you're going to have a part in the middle that shows the genre of the movie. So, for example, in this one, they are making the amazing Root and Tootin' board game movie. So you got a whole new set, and then you've got genre tokens are going to go on, and you can kind of see it here. Look, they've added the cowboy hat and the bat to the scene. Totally useless, totally unnecessary, does nothing for the game except make it really cool. I love it. There's going to be some new main board actions. New places to spend your dice. And now you have equipment cards where players will have equipment in front of them they can spend their dice on. Um, there are now multicolored scene cards, which can be used to complete different things. And then there's a whole thing here that I think is fantastic. Look at all the different ways to customize your game to make it easier or harder. And honestly, based on all the games we have played of Roll Camera, I'm going to be happy about this harder part because we seldom lose the game. It always feels tight, but we've won almost every time we play. Dig it, and then uh, just a reference card. So you're looking at big 14 pages. Um, 13 of that, pure rules to use this expansion. Customizing difficulty at the end and then what to do. So, And that is not a small font. So lots of changes here. This is honestly one of the nicest rule books I've ever felt. Like, it's got the linen finish. It's thick. This isn't going to tear. Man, it feels nice. I will admit it doesn't feel like a script, but who cares? There's a little reference here and a small index. There it shows how complex your expansion rules are when you give an index, but props to King Bean for giving us an index. All right, we're going to put that aside and start looking at what we get in here. So one of the things this does come with is, is it turns your game into a legacy game. You have stickers to put over the main board, which I totally, I, I dig it. I, I don't mind that whatsoever. Um, so you just change up your board and then you made a permanent change for this expansion. Now, some people aren't going to like that. They give you tokens instead cardboard so if you ever want to remove the expansion play without it so whatever your preference is sticker up your main board if you really dig this expansion what i like is i can now try it i can go out and i can play 
with the expansion with these just placed on my main board. Oh, those punched easy. Nice and thick too. Put these on the main board and then if I like it, make the permanent change or not. I appreciate that. So here we have the new, one of the new actions, which is all about swapping and adding genre tokens. And we have some of the genre tokens for the fantasy and the sci-fi. Uh, these are two-sided, but the same thing on both sides. Then we have the crime, western, and horror tokens. And then this is um, was, was a Kickstarter stretch goal, but everyone gets a copy. These are just extra bits to add to your scenes to make them look sillier or funny. I, and I, I don't know. I appreciate it. To me, this is a perfect kind of stretch goal. Um, and I love the fact that even the retailer version, which is what I have here, includes these now. Now we have new character types, new character art types to play. These feel thicker than the original, but I don't know. I'd have to have my original. They do have UV coating. And again, this is on every version. So we have... It's weird. It doesn't say who it is. It's obviously a sound person, but the fact... Oh, there. It's just sound. Okay. That's the name of the role. I'm like, obviously, it's, it's the boom mic. So we have their unique ability, their, their, their way... I and mean, look, this looks genre-based. So it's going to do things. Again, these aren't... One of the things that these cards don't do is explain everything, so you may have to look up their things. Um, and, of course, there's two sides, which I've always appreciated, um, with different representations, and then two different player privileges. This is another silly part of the game where you may make sound effects while other players do things on their turn. It's silly role-playing like elements, which, again, nothing to the mechanics, nothing about winning the game, but make the game more fun. So we have the sound person. We have the production assistant with their own random task and get coffee ability, which looks like it lets you swap up your um, ideas for meetings and the helping hand. Then we have the visual effects supervisor, um, which can, looks like they can, you can do some changing up the sets. Looks like you can do something with themes with rotoscoping and you can do pre visual again, two different sides here. Then we have the composer who has a tempo change, uh, which is going to let you rear. That's, that's a good, useful ability. Um, set the mood, I don't know, and orchestrate, which is going to give you an idea card. Again, two sides. Makeup artist. Wow, there's a lot of these. Isn't this more than the rule book said? Makeup artist who has continuity, prosthetics, and makeover abilities. Again, two sided with different art. Different player for and the stunt coordinator. <laughs> Live dangerously lets you um it looks like complete dangerous tasks. Stage combat and safety plan. Stage combat lets it look like you can re-roll a die. Nice ability. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's got a thumbs up, so I'm gonna assume he's okay. Alright, cards. A simple trough insert. It's a card game. It's kind of what I expect. This is not gonna be a great way to sort and store these cards. So you know what? I don't mind. This was obviously designed just to get all this stuff to us in good shape. So I can't complain about that. This is not going to be a great storage solution for the game. So we're going to start off. It looks like this is cool. You don't just get new scripts in the middle. It looks like they're giving us scripts that are um, for the top and bottom as well. So you're not just getting the new genre scripts. All right. So we're going to just go through these quick. Bad vibes, mayhem. Again, these are the goals, right? You're going to get points. You're, you're going to get quality of your movie for matching it. So five new bottom parts. And then all our new, so you can have time traveling, which is fantasy and sci-fi. I probably should have zoomed in. Cold calculating. So all the new genre types, which of course are a mix of... Oh, that's cool. Uh, although cannibal... Okay, I said that's cool and it's cannibalistic. I don't mean cannibalism's cool. Um, You can't have any Western themes. So there's even some that are like, oh, these are neat. Okay. And then we probably have five new tops is my guess because there are five bottoms. Yeah. Five new tops for types. So new script cards. Awesome. Appreciated. I see player aid cards and then I have some of the movie cards here. Let's do this deck next. All right. So reference cards for all the new characters. So I kind of mentioned earlier about I don't like how the player cards don't tell you what the abilities do. Well, they're all in these cards. So it's not like you got to look them up in the rule book. So these are the ones. And then there's a general overplay, overview of play. So there's a player aid and then what each specific character, new character cards abilities do. Then we have equipment cards, which is something totally new. We have a whole bunch of those. Art's fantastic. You need the super tripod. 
the old timey bullhorn. So a whole bunch of equipment cards. It's a significant stack of those. Card quality here matches the original. Nice, solid cards. It's going to deal with shuffling well. No, they're not bicycle level, but these are nice quality cards. I'm going to throw those there. You know what? I still have this out, so we'll throw that there. New idea cards, which you can bring to the table. I love the idea system in the game. Just a whole bunch of new ones. Not going to go all multiple different types in the top corner. New problem cards, because of course, with new stuff. And of course, they're genre based, right? So shooting the scene cost one more dollar for genre you had, or you lose a genre. So yeah, this makes sense, right? They're, some of these are genre based. Other ones look like they're just new ones to add in. So new problem cards. Oh, interesting. You even get some new production companies. So production companies are a way to make the game more interesting if you played it a bunch of times. They give you some kind of limitation or bonus for the game you're playing. So if you were playing jam-packed productions, you would have the following rules, which again, these are genre-based. Um, if you were playing Brain Drain Group is your production company, you have special rules there that obviously are based on idea cards. So some new production companies. Got those. And then we have three new scenes. Only three new scenes in the entire deck. Oh, no, there'll be more over here. I was going to say, three new, that's not a lot of scenes. And we have, you know, Craters and a zombie guy and a Screaming Wanted poster. And, of course, half the fun of this game is to describe it. So I'm going to guess the rest of these are scenes, but let's find out. Scenes? Yep, scenes. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of scenes. Holy cow. That is a lot. Of new scene cards. Of course, the new scene cards are probably genre referenced. You're going to film a chicken. Wasn't that an advertising campaign for one of the big fast food companies? Okay, what I've got to do before I go, though, is we got to make this a fantasy crime movie. There you go. He's, he's not wearing the witch's hat. And let's see. Where's the other cheat? My kids are going to have far too much fun with this. Okay, we're going to change this so he's actually stealing a guitar. So there we go. I, I have now customized this scene with the awesome cardboard tokens that are totally pointless, except for the fact that it was fun. There you have it. Now I just got to put everything back together, which again, we'll do uh, by the magic of video editing and get all this back in the box. But like, look at all this stuff. Look at, we, we got, I'm um, spread some of this out here. We got those, we got new characters. We got stickers to put on our board. We got more stuff in here. If you don't want to put stickers on your board, the new scripts I already tossed in the box. Look at all this stuff. That is a lot of stuff. I'm impressed. All right, clean it up. Boom. All right, there you have it. What you get in this extremely full, um, you know what people like to call these is TARDIS games. I recently heard that. Um, and I got to say, this is one, um, sometimes we complain about the amount of error in a box when you buy a board game or an expansion. This is the exact opposite. There is a ton of stuff in here. Um, wow. Like I, I just felt like I just kept finding more things. The amount of new scenes alone is staggering. There is a ridiculous stack of new scenes, new ideas, like not even all these are in the back of the box. There's stuff in here. I had no clue was coming with this. So the big part of the game, of course, adds a um, themes, right? The B-movie, we now have genres to our movies for when you play roll camera. So we have genres that are being added and all the rules for that and new action spaces to play with the genres. But there's more in here. There are a ton of new character classes. What do they call them? I call them playable roles, new roles to play in the game, um, each with a two-sided board and its own special abilities. There are 75 new scene cards, 75 plus. So yeah, there was more than six rolls. There's more than what it says on the back of the box here. That's just kind of awesome. How often do you buy something? You open it up and you get more than you expect. That is awesome. Um, there's two new action tiles, and they're also available as stickers, which I really appreciate. That's awesome. If you want to, you can stick your main board. But if you don't, if you don't like modifying your stuff, which some people don't, you have stickers you can use. And then there's the bonus stuff that I just think is really cool, that the genre tokens, which are used while you're playing, can then be put on your scenes to make silly things. And they even included a bunch of extra cardboard tokens to pretty up your scenes, which is silly. It's ridiculous. As someone who generally likes heavy games, I should be like, why? Why are you wasting this cardboard on this? 
This is silly, but it's fun. I did it here while I was unboxing. Really dig this game. Really looking forward to exploring the B-movie expansion for Roll Camera. Now, when I do finally get this to the table, which if uh, Sean in the chat room or my partner has a choice, might be tomorrow night, um, we, we will be sharing our thoughts on this game on social media, where you can find us everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Uh, eventually, I plan on doing up a review for this game, uh, or sorry, this expansion, which you'll be able to find at TabletopBellhop.com. Um, I think I said TabletopBellhop.com for my social. Sorry, that's just Tabletop Bellhop, one word, everywhere. Uh, you don't need the .com. If you go to our website, you do. Um, you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Tabletop Bellhop, and all the other usual places. We'll also be talking about it on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which we record live Wednesday nights on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tabletop Bellhop, and which you can listen to on your podcatcher of choice. Just search the Tabletop Bellhop and you'll be able to find me. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. Good day and game on.